بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على النبي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to one and all May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this concise discussion of ours in regards to Hajjat al beneficial for all of us May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take us to the holy lands again and again and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alleviate this pandemic from the four corners of the world May Allah connect us and the whole of humanity to his mercy and proximity a forerunner to Hajjat al Before Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's Hajj, a few years prior to that, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala paved the way for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam first of all to get to Makkah Mukarramah. It was the sixth year when Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw this dream where himself and his Sahaba عنهم, were going for Umrah and seeing the Kaaba circumambulating performing the tawaf, performing the umrah. Sahaba radiallahu anhum were very happy. They undertook this journey. And there Allah taught the ummah a very important, pertinent lesson. That Allah makes things happen in the correct time. Sahaba radiallahu anhum were barred at an area called Hudaybiya. And they were not allowed entry into Makkah Mukarramah. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu taught humanity a very great lesson here. He told them, Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told you you would perform Umrah and definitely you will perform the Umrah. It's just the time Allah doesn't stipulate and it'll happen in the right and correct time. So sixth year, let's all remember, Sulh al takes place. Allah reveals Surah Al-Fatih in the quran Kareem, and this indicates to the opening of the hearts like it also refers to future events like Fatih Makkah, the conquering and the quink conquest of Makkah that will take place shortly thereafter. That was the sixth year. The Muslims weren't allowed to perform Umrah. They had to return to Medina Munawwara, but they accepted the decision of Allah. The seventh year, many interesting events took place. One, Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam now, because there was no anticipation of attacks from the Meccan side to Medina Munawwara, Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam now sent Sahaba to the countries of the world with letters inviting them to the greatness of Allah and to the deen of Allah and to the messengership and the prophethood of Janabi Rasulullah Sallallahu and his finality. Then in that year, Umratul Qada takes place, the Qada of the previous year's Umrah. That was the seventh year. In the eighth year, here also Allah Ta'ala made amazing events take place. Amazing when we study Sirah, we learn this lesson. How Allah paves the way. Anyway, those events you have learned, it was so amazing. But that caused the conquest of Makkah Mukarramah. And Makkah was now in the hands of Janabi Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Ummah. That was the eighth year. Now Makkah was in Muslim hands. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam returned to Medina Munawwara after Fatih Makkah. Then Hunain takes place, Taif takes place. But let's at least remember Fatih Makkah, eighth year after Hijrah. Now, ninth year came in. Then Dhul Hijjah, the end of the year comes. A lot of events took place during that year. When Hajj time came in, Rasulullah sallallahu did not perform Hajj that year. There's a lot of wisdom behind it. Number one, the Arabs would always change the dates. They would always change the dates according to their wombs because their sacred months, among the sacred months is the month of Dhul Hijjah and sometimes certain battles would take place, certain events they wanted to occur and because it was not conducive to the sacred month, they would change it as they wanted to and they would refer to this as Nasi'ah. Allah says, fil kufr. This is an increase in kufr where they would change the dates as they wanted to. So the dates were not perfectly in order that year. And also there were certain inappropriate actions and practices still prevalent in Makkah that Hazrat Abu Bakr had to go and pave the way. And that was also wisdom presenting to the Ummah the importance and the position and the maqam and the status of Hazrat Abu Bakr. Because shortly after the departure of Hazrat Abu Bakr, Hazrat Ali was designated for certain tasks. And as Hazrat Ali radiallahu anhu catches up with the qafila and the caravan of Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. 
سی صحابہ از ہیومیلٹی حضرت ابو بکر رضی اللہ عنہ آس حضرت علی رضی اللہ عنہ ہیو یو بین سینٹ ایز مائی امیر سو ڈیفینیٹلی آئی وڈ کمپلائی او وچ او وائی ہیو یو بین سینٹ ہی سیز نو آئی ہیو بین سینٹ فار اناؤنسمنٹس آئی ایم انڈر یو او حضرت ابو بکر رضی اللہ عنہ اینڈ دیٹ حج ٹوک پلیس دس واز اے فور انا ٹو حج ات الوداع دین اللہ تعالی میڈ ایٹ دیٹ دی ڈیٹس اینڈ دی منتھس فیل ان ٹو پرفیکٹ پرپورشن and it came back to its original time and that year was the 10th year so this was the 9th year Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu's hajj the 10th year came in now the time was perfect it was time for nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam to perform this great amal this great hajj this compulsion and this important all inclusive ibadah wherein the entire ummah was gathered and they joined him in this beautiful performance of this hajj which is known as hajjatul wada because it was a farewell hajj where allah's nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam was performing yes this important hajj but it was a final hajj and it was also a time where he would soon be bidding farewell to his ummah the ummah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah's habib sallallahu alaihi wasallam announced to the ummah that he would be performing hajj And the ummah came from the length and the breadth of the lands. Sahaba radiallahu anhu had taken Islam to them. Now they had come to meet Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and to get the glimpses of his blessings and his uh, nur and his tawajjuh from th- through which they would get this tajalli and the special ta'alluq with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the special status of being the sahaba the chosen ones the sahaba of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam every sahabi is chosen by allah so many were there already with the close companions of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam others from far and wide took this opportunity to come and meet rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam interesting interestingly many were those who met him long ago but they were waiting for this occasion to come and meet him and allah's nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam would remember them allah akbar he would remember them this was his dua and his worry and his concern for every one of his ummah anyway the whole salah was performed in al madinatul munawwara on the 25th of dhul qaada because it was the whole salah that's why the preferred view is that it was a saturday then they departed Asr salah was performed in Dhul Hulayfa the night was spent there that night Allah's Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam had time and relation with all his wives that were with him in their specific times and we learn from ya ulama deduce that it is mustahab for one to have relations with one's wife before donning the ihram this is a sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this was him fulfilling the huquq of all his wives radiyallahu anhum and this is also where we learn the strength that Allah's nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam had the strength of 40 people of jannah Allah taala gave him such strength that's why we learn that no one could ever put him down but he never ever showed the strength to people he never ever uh, bashed or hurt or brought down people Allahu Akbar this was the akhlaq of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam even Rukana before he became radiyallahu anhu when he tried to bring down the messenger of Allah in the wrestle Allah's nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam agreed to the wrestle just to save him from jahannam and Allah's nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam with ease brought down the mightiest wrestler of Arabia just to save him from jahannam this was Allah's nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam's akhlaq Anyway the night was spent in Dhul Hulaifa then Allah's Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam donned his ihram there and he made niyyah of his qiran Jibril alayhi salam told him to make intention for hajj and umrah and this was also to remove the practice of jahiliyyah Allah's Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam's every action has wisdom and has teachings in jahiliyyah they would not perform umrah in the days of hajj and Allah Ta'ala wanted to abolish this teaching through the practice of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he gave his Sahaba Radiyallahu Anhum the choice also of what, what to perform ifrad or tamattu' and Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then afterwards recited the labbaik there's variant reports of where did he read the labbaik from the masjid after his salah or as he was climbing up the hill or when he got onto his conveyance sahaba radiyallahu anhum whoever were near him at that time heard the labbaik at those different points and what a beautiful rendition or song of the lover of allah is the labbaik allah akbar as we discussed previously the labbaik in the first sahabi radiyallahu anhu to recite the labbaik who was taught 
the labbaik by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited the labbaik and the Sahaba radiallahu anhum started reciting the labbaik. They passed by a valley called Aqiq. Jibreel alayhi salam comes, informs Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, reads salah ya. Allah says this is a Mubarak valley. Anyway, Sahaba radiallahu anhum were reading the labbaik. Jibreel alayhi salam came and instructed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell your Sahaba radiallahu anhum, fal yarfa'u aswatahum bit talbiyah. Allah loves the talbiya so much, let them raise their voices with the labbaik. The ummat, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum would raise their voices with the labbaik because this was an instruction from Allah ta'ala. Allah give us tawfiq. Today, sadly, it's very few who recite the labbaik. Alhamdulillah, sometimes you get this environment here, this ambiance where different, different communities come in from different countries and they're reciting the labbaik passionately and lovingly. Allah make us of those. Ulama write that it is one of the signs of qiyamah that a time would come where people would not read the labbaik. On these days of hajj, a haji's dhikr is labbaik. When he is in ihram, his salam, Allah give us the to make salam to all, is labbaik. He's climbing up a hill is labbaik. He's going down the hill is labbaik. After salah, his dhikrullah is labbaik. A slogan of the lover of Allah Ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. So Sahaba radiallahu anhum would recite the labbaik loudly. Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed different towns. Scholars of history document the names of these towns. Allah give us tawfiq to learn Sahaba's names radiallahu anhum. And even remember towns that Allah's Nabi passed. How Mubarak is the life of Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his teachings that every aspect connected to him becomes ilm and becomes knowledge and becomes inspiration and becomes enlightenment and becomes nur and hidayat for one who learns it. Allah give us tawfiq. He passed through an area called Malal, Ruha, Afaya, Araj, Abwa, Usfan, some of these towns. When he passed Ruha, Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa informed the Sahaba radiallahu anhum that 70 Anbiya alayhim salatu wa salam perform, performed their salaya in Ruha. Allahu Akbar. And we discussed this in our discussion of Badr because Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa passed this region there also when he drank the water and Sa'ad radiallahu anhum purchasing that well where Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa drank the water. We discussed this, this there. When Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa passed Araj, anyway, they camped there for a while and the baggage of Allah's Habib sallallahu alayhi wasallam was nowhere to be found and Allah's Habib sallallahu alayhi wasallam and Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu's baggage were together were kept together on one camel back and the man in charge of keeping that was Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu's slave or understand it to be a servant Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu had this slave and he was on the khidmah and he was in charge of that camel and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu is now upset why is he upset? Not for his own baggage, but someone connected to him, his servant, had caused taklif to Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Abu Bakr anhu is hurt and is upset that Allah's Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam needs his baggage, needs his luggage, whatever was needed for the journey was on there. And this man had misplaced the camel. The camel went wrong. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allah's Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, hold on, hold on. You are in ihram, be cool, be calm. This is a report in Sunan Libni Majah. We learn something from you. That in Hajj, we have to be tolerant. We have to be patient. One is the guest of Allah. Allah's Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, through his journey, he taught the mu'min this. That's why it's interesting that a mu'min in his, in his ihram, as we'll see in the other days also, Arafah, Muzdalifah, Mina, the Haji doesn't fast. Why doesn't the Haji fast when everyone around the world gains so much of rewards for fasting? Because the Mu'min throughout the world is thinking about the Haji and trying to imitate the Haji in some sort of sacrifice. But the Haji doesn't fast because he is the guest of Allah. al Haju Wafdullah. This is the hikmah behind why the Haji doesn't fast. And Allah Ta'ala takes care of his guests. Whatever his guest asks, Allah Ta'ala fulfills the need of his guest. And when his guest seeks forgiveness, Allah Ta'ala guarantees forgiveness for his special guest, the Haji, and for anyone on behalf of whom the Haji asks Allah Ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. So, very importantly, 
also this is part of the hikmat of Allah and the love of Allah that Allah puts his haji through a tarbiyat a training so that he comes and he becomes spiritually rejuvenated so we learn from here be tolerant and in any any situation turn to Allah ta'ala women go through different challenges men go through different challenges sometimes we want we want certain things to happen and sometimes we don't want certain things to happen a simple thing like sometimes it's halal it's permissible for a woman to try and stop her bleeding for example but it happens that Allah Ta'ala willed it that it still comes no matter what means she tried to stop it what what's the test at that time be happy with Allah Ta'ala turn to Allah Ta'ala and have this conviction that oh my Allah you will do for me what is best I would love to quote Umar radiallahu anhu statement so beautifully he says Amir al-Mu'mineen Umar radiallahu anhu he said عرفت ربي بفسخ عزائمي he says we recognize Allah through so many means he says one way of how I recognize Allah is sometimes I want something to happen so badly and I fulfill every means in the fulfillment I carry out every means in the fulfillment of that wish or that intention that I have but Allah Ta'ala makes it that it doesn't happen he says what i realize is allah is in control allah is the doer allah is the one that causes things to happen and allah is that being who makes it not happen as he wants so one allah is in control that's how i recognize allah in the situation where the goods of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and sayyidina abu bakr radiyallahu anhu was missing sa'd radiyallahu anhu and abu qais radiyallahu anhu understood what had happened so they came quickly and they bidded Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam oh nabi of allah please accept our goods allah's nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said may allah bless you and with allah's grace our camel and our goods have been found so allah taala showed rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam where the camel went off and he sent the sahabi radiyallahu anhu to bring the camel back alhamdulillah so we learn no matter what situation turn to allah taala and if allah taala takes something allah taala will give much more and allah will give better as they come to a place called Asfa uh, Usfan near Makkah Mukarramah Suraqa radiyallahu anhu great sahabi Suraqa radiyallahu anhu remember him he tried to capture Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam on the journey of hijrah and what a great sahabi he became Suraqa it means something someone valuable that everyone wants to steal Suraqa he comes to Allah's habib sallallahu alaihi wasallam onabi of Allah teach us as though we are newborn babies Allah's habib sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught him different different aspects and how to enter Makkah Mukarramah and so forth Then they come to a place called Sarif and here Aisha radiyallahu anha started her menstruation as a result of this she was crying she was weeping oh and she said hey what's going to happen to my journey now is my journey a waste haj is near how is it? how how how, how this happened rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam came there he finds her crying he consoles her no aisha this is indeed something that happens to every person this is allah taala's will It's not such a big situation. Allah Taala will solve it. Don't worry. He put her her fears to ease, and then she was calmed. He gave her himma, and Alhamdulillah, the journey continued, and she performed her Hajj. And afterwards, Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent her to make up whatever would have been missed, and so forth. Then, very near Makkah, at a valley called Azraq. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says to his sahaba radiyallahu anhum I see now before me the moment when Musa alayhi salam passed this way for Hajj with his fingers in his ears loudly crying out the labbaik loudly crying out the labbaik Allahu akbar Allahu akbar labbaik Allahumma labbaik labbaik la sharika lak labbaik innal hamda wan ni'mata lak wal mulk La sharika lak At the Tua Which is very near Makkah Mukarramah Allah's Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Spent the night there Then in the morning He performed ghusl once more For entrance into Makkah That was the reason for that ghusl To enter into Makkah Mukarramah And thereafter At the time of Duha On Sunday The fourth of Dhul Hijjah Allah's Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Entered Makkah Mukarramah And then From there He went straight to Al-Masjid Al-Haram and he went straight to kiss the Hajar Aswad and he started his tawaf. He didn't there was no tahiyatul masjid salah performed at that time. After Allah's Habib sallallahu alaihi wasallam's tawaf, then he performed the turakat salah behind the maqam Ibrahim. After Sa'i Rasulullah between between Safa and Marwa, 
Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam instructed his sahaba radhiyallahu whoever didn't have the hadi animals along with them to come out of ihram and he remained in his ihram because his was qiran and most of them performed the tamattu and then he remained in makkah mukarramah for four more days then on the eighth of dhul hijjah it's known as yawm at they would actually give their camels water at that time keep it ready because of the journey between mina and uh, arafa anyway allah's habib sallallahu alaihi wasallam after charged went to mina and he performed five day five salahs there dhuhr asr maghrib isha and fajr on the ninth that night surah al mursalat was revealed on friday the ninth after sunrise nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam departed with his sahaba radhiyallahu anhum and they went to arafa sahaba radhiyallahu anhum pitched a tent for rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam near masjid namira and he spent some time there then he came out and he presented his khutbah to the ummah allahu akbar and in all these days allah's habib sallallahu alaihi wasallam presented his khutbah entailing different different topics and aspects of deen topics that cover the whole of deen because this is known as hajjatul wada the farewell and in this allah's nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that allah knows whether you would see me after this again so take the deen from me and then different aspects of deen was covered one of the very very important aspects of islam was emphasized by rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is respect for each and every person for example allah's nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said oh my umma what day is this what month is this what lands are these now sahaba radhiyallahu anhum were intrigued by this is habib sallallahu alaihi wasallam going to call it something else no he was actually emphasizing something that they knew and he was drawing a lesson that like this day is sacred this month is sacred these lands are so sacred and respected oh my umma inna dima'akum wa amwalakum wa a'radakum haram alaykum ka hurmat yawmikum hada fi shahrikum hada allah's habib sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that like this day is sacred like this month is sacred like these lands are sacred every person's life is respected and honored every person's wealth should not be usurped it's his haq and every person's honor is preserved every person should be honored and respected allahu akbar allah's nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam emphasized this that like we respect these lands and respect these days and respect these months we have to respect each other irrespective of color race nationality language this was emphasized respect for every person never look down upon the next person allah loves each one allah never judges people for their color for their race for their nationality or from the tribe they come from allah's habib sallallahu alaihi wasallam emphasized this and even this was proven from the fact that when he came to arafa it was quraish who would never come out of the haram because arafa is out of the haram they would say that we are allah's people we cannot come out of the haram allah's habib sallallahu alaihi wasallam showed that everyone is equal before allah we go to arafa arafa is valuable we are all the servants of allah taala and everyone is equal this was one aspect highlighted in in the different khutbas then in the other days also allah's habib sallallahu alaihi wasallam highlighted so many different teachings ya allah so many beautiful different teachings one teaching during the days of araf uh, 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 of hajj open hayat us sahaba of malana yusuf rahmatullah alayhi, and he quotes with the chain of reporters that nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam's different advices on different occasions like one beautiful advice he said that make akhira your goal and your purpose and your objective in life man ja'ala al-humum hamman wahidan from all your worries make your main worry the worry of akhira make the year after the fikr for the akhira your purpose and your goal if that is our goal and our purpose the small nitty gritty issues of this world will not become troublesome for us because we know that all this has to be left we have to please allah taala allah must become happy because when when we leave this world all these issues will not be important at all then he allah's habib sallallahu alaihi wasallam said allah will care allah will worry for your worldly worries when you make allah your goal and your purpose and your objective but the one who makes dunya his goal and objective and purpose Allah will let his mind go into the different valleys and aspects of this world and then he'll get destroyed in those valleys. This was Habib sallallahu alaihi wasallam's advices in these days. And then he also said, "Oh my ummah, whatever you learn 
Naddar Allah Umran. He made dua. O oh Allah, give luster, give beauty, give brightness, give freshness, give youthfulness, nadara to that person who will hear my teachings. Take it in himself and then impart it to others. What a dua Allah's Habib said. And in that advice, he gave the importance of unity and how dua becomes strong when we are united and how he gave advice of sincerity towards every person, especially to the leaders and to every ummati of Habib This was one of the lessons. And another very important advice he gave was treatment of women, how we should respect and be kind to our woman folk. And Allah's Habib emphasized this in quite a few of the khutbahs. And then also, he emphasized that matters of jahiliyyah are abolished. Matters of the past should not be brought up again. Things like murders that took place in the past. And he also emphasized one specific murder. His own uncle's son, Rabi'a Damu ibn Rabi'a ibn al-Harith. So Rabi'a was Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's cousin because Harith is Abdul Muttalib's eldest son. You can remember in the seerah, Abdul Muttalib had two views, 10 sons or 12 sons. And his eldest son was Harith. When he was digging for Zamzam next to Kaaba, he had Harith at that time. And he took that vow, Allah, I'll sacrifice one for you if you give me 10. Harith was his son at that time. Now Harith's son was Rabi'a, who's Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's cousin. And Rabi'a had an infant child and this child was suckling in Banu Sa'ad and the Hudayl tribe came and killed this infant. Allah's Nabi Wasallam said, for example, that issue, that issue should not be brought up again. It's the past. Leave Jahiliyyah. Carry on further. So he said, start with my own. This is my own nephew, but this matter should be past. Let's carry on. Allah gave us Islam. Aspects like that. Even usury, riba. What destruction riba brings to a person's life. Quran announces this is an ultimatum of war with Allah. Allah save us from riba. Allah save us from, from, from uh, you know, uh, involving ourselves with things that displease Allah Ta'ala like this. Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said all this riba is totally abolished in Islam. It is, it, it is, it is abrogated. It is not permissible. Mawdu'a tahta qadamiya. I trample it under my feet. And he says, I start with that of my uncle Abbas. Abbas radiallahu anhu. Whatever riba he was collecting also is abolished. And if you owe anything to him, that is, as far as usually is concerned, I wipe it out. Yes, your capital you can keep. This was how Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam emphasized. Then interestingly, in every one of his khutbahs, he said to his ummah, my deen must be taken and imparted to the four corners of the world. Allah Akbar. This is an aspect Allah's Habib sallallahu alayhi wasallam emphasized. This was part and parcel of Al Habib sallallahu alayhi wasallam's teachings. What was this? Throughout his life, during the Medina period and during the Makkah period, in many of the hadith we'll find this repetition. That's why in Sunan Ibn Majah, he brings this hadith so many times. Generally, the Musannif Rahimahullah, Muhammad Ibn Yazid Ibn Majah Rahimahullah brings this hadith one one time. Bring, brings a hadith one time in his kitab. But there's few hadith that he highlights. Like this hadith of imparting the knowledge of deen and imparting the dawat of deen. He brings this hadith more than seven times in the one chapter. Emphasizing. This is something Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa emphasized throughout his Mubarak life. Whenever he would teach something, at the end he would say, now pass it on to others. Now pass it on to others. It is an amana. What we learn and then to share it with others is the amana of the deen. Here in Hajjatul Wada as well. In every one of his khutbahs, like the importance of respecting the next was emphasized and highlighted. This aspect was also highlighted, repeated, and emphasized. That فَلْيُبَلِّغْ أَشْشَاهِدُ مِنْكُمُ الْغَائِبَ فَلْيُبَلِّغْ شَاهِدُكُمْ غَائِبَكُمْ In different ways, Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, every one of you that I hear, now take this message of my entire deen and convey it to humanity. Every person that's not here has to get this full message. فَلْيُبَلِّغْ Those that are here must convey it, must impart it. And then in other hadith, Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, sometimes Allah will make it that the one who receives it will impart it more. Obviously, nobody can be better than Sahaba radiallahu anhum and nobler than Sahaba radiallahu anhum. But this was encouraging his ummah. Throughout 
the annals of the coming times that take this deen and pass it on that will be your investment in the future that that will be your legacy in this dunya that you left a mark on this earth of the name of Allah Ta'ala, the deen of Allah Ta'ala, the sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the teachings of Kalamullah, the teachings of deen, and how, what a great means of reward is this. How many hajj can one person go for? How many Qur'ans a person can memorize? How many uh, sunan a person can bring into his life? But when one brings it into his own life and imparts it into the lives of others, Whatever they will do, Allah will give him the full reward. What an investment is this imparting in the deen of Allah Ta'ala. Allah, Allah give us tawfiq. And Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam emphasized this aspect of respect even further. After his khutbah, then Bilal radiallahu anhu presented the adhan. He rendered the adhan so beautifully. Everyone heard. Then Dhuhr and Asr was performed together at Dhuhr time. Then Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went further onto his camel. And then after that he made dua he made dua and made dua and made dua and made dua dua for his ummah he begged allah for his ummah he beseeched allah for his ummah oh allah my ummah oh allah my ummah oh allah my ummah ummah that were there ummah that are to come ummah that are the wrongdoers ummah that are the oppressed Everyone was covered. Ya Allah. He cried and he cried and he cried. Read this in the, the kitabs of, of, of Sirah. How Allah's Habib sallallahu alayhi wa cried. Ummul Fadl radiallahu anha. What a great sahabiyah. Abbas radiallahu anhu's wife. Maymuna radiallahu anha's sister. She was thinking, is Allah's Habib sallallahu alayhi wa fasting? So before sunset she sent milk. So Habib sallallahu alayhi wa to show everyone that I'm not fasting, sat on the camel and drank that milk. But he continued his dua right till sunset. Hours and hours and hours of beseeching Allah. Anyway, when the sun had set, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa was waiting to depart. And everyone is anticipating who is he waiting for. And one young sahabi of dark skin, mother was African origin. Habib sallallahu alayhi wa was practically showing humanity that color means nothing. Heart is what is valuable. Color is all equal before Allah. He said it, sallallahu alayhi wa he taught it and he showed it practically. Usama bin Zaid climbs onto the camel with Habib sallallahu alayhi wa So there were few people who were new to Islam, commented something. What? Everyone was made to wait for this person. Mu'arrikheen write that those who uttered these comments later on were punished by Allah with irtidad because of disrespect for a sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Allah, Allah save us from disrespect, a person who loses iman. Usama radiallahu anhu was with Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on this journey. Then a point came where Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam needed to relieve himself. Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu anhu was there. Allah's Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam relieved himself. They asked him, would you want to perform salah? He said, no, salah is at Muzdalifa, further on. And then he continued. And Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu look at love for sunnah. All his life, he would stop at that point and relieve himself there. Not that he needed to relieve himself later on. It was because of, this, because of something that Habib sallallahu alayhi wa did. Sahaba took the practice of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa to be binding on themselves. This is love for Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then at Muzdalifa, that night is spent. Ya Allah, what a night. The night where every mu'min, the sky is the roof. It is an occasion where the haji has the opportunity to feel like how that needy, poor individual is feeling that we see in different countries of the world. Yes, we give a few pennies and we walk away and we feel satisfied. But this is that occasion where we realize that every one of us are beggars before Allah. We get the opportunity to take that brick and lie down on it and feel humbled before Allah. That Allah, you are one, you are unique, you are pure, you are perfect. You need nothing and no one. And everything and everyone is totally in need of you, my mighty, my merciful Allah. This is what, this is what Hajj is about, to connect with Allah, to communicate with Allah, to learn about the love of Allah. It is a spiritual journey, not like, an, like, like any other ibadah which is important. But here, yeah, this is the journey of the lover and someone who is going to learn love. That's why the pious predecessors would say so beautifully. He would say, Ilayka qasdi 
رب البيت والحجر فأنت سؤلي من حجي ومن عمري وفيك سعي وتطوافي ومزدلفي والهدي جسم الذي يغني عن الجزر ومسجد الخيف خوفي من تباعدكم ومشعري ومقامي دونكم خطري زادي رجائي لكم والشوق راحلتي والماء من عبراتي والهوى سفري He says, إليك قصدي Oh my Allah, I'm on a search for you رب البيت You are the Lord of Kaaba والحجري and the Lord of the semicircle connected to Kaaba which is part and parcel of Kaaba Allah, I've come to ask you for you. فَأَنْتَ سُؤْلِي I've come for you. Through my hajj and my umrah, my search is you, my Allah. And Allah says, Oh my banda, search for me, you will find me. وَفِيكَ سَعْيِي When I'm running between Safa and Marwa and around my tawaf, Allah, it's for you. It is in search for your pleasure. My muzdalifa, All this is for you, my Allah. And when I'm sacrificing that animal, I'm actually sacrificing my nafs, my own self that doesn't need to be physically slaughtered but needs to be put secondary for your pleasure that has to be priority. Oh Allah, when I come to Masjid Al-Khayf, it is to teach me that I must stay away from anything that will distance me from you. And oh my Allah, when I come to the mawqif of Arafah and, and, and Mina, I learn that you must be in my mind and my concentration. Zadi Rajai Lakum. And what is my provision on my journey is my aspiration for you, Allah. My conveyance is my shok for you, Allah. And my water is the tears that I must shed for you, Allah. When Allah Wala puts it like that, and then Ibn Rajab Rahimahullah quotes another so beautifully. He says, La illam ahujjal bayta o shatta rabihi. حججت إلى من لا يغيب عن الذكر فأحرمت من وقتي بخلع نقائصي أطوف وأسعى في اللطائف والبر صفاي صفائي عن صفاتي ومروتي مروءة قلبي عن سوى حبه قفر وفي عرفات الأنس بالله موقفي ومزدلف الزلفى لديه إلى الحشر وبت المنا مني مبيتي في منا ورمي جمالي جمر شوقي في صدري وإشعار هدي ذبح نفسي بقهرها وخلعي بمحو الكائنات عن السر ومن رام نفرا بعد نسك فإنني مقيم على نسك حياتي بلا نفري He says my hajj is not just to bait Allah bait Allah is part of it but my hajj is to that being who I have to be in dhikr of all the time, who doesn't come out of my mind. I make ihram from the miqat, and my ihram is to leave all evil. And for this, I will strive and rush fil lataif in, in, the, in the love of Allah, in that which Allah loves, wal birri, and all righteous deeds. Not barri, birri. Bar is land, bir is righteous deeds. Safa ya safai, my safa, when I climb on safa, on Mount Safa, it's to teach me I must cleanse myself from the qualities Allah doesn't like. An sifati wa marwati. And my marwa is to make my heart clean from everything else that Allah dislikes. And from everything else besides Allah. And in Arafat, I must learn to recognize Allah and be comfortable with that closeness to Allah. And that's my mawqif in Arafat. And my muzdalifa wa muzdalifi az-zulfa ladayhi ila al-hashri is to remind me that I'm going to stand before Allah on the Day of Judgment. And my nights in Mina wa battal muna minni mabitiya fi Mina. My nights being spent in Mina is to teach me to cut off my passions and desires of this world, that this will be left and sacrificed. jimari jamru fi sadri, and my ramyul jimar is to actually throw out those passions in my heart. Wa ishaaru hadi, and marking my sacrificial animal is to teach me that I have to sacrifice my nafs by controlling it biqahriha, and to remove from me the garments of everything else besides Allah from my consciousness and from my heart. This is that level of the love of Allah, 
Allah give us glimpses of this love. Then he says, after your hajj, you can leave. Woman rama nafran. He who intends to depart after his hajj, ba'da nuskin, after his nusuk. Fa'innani, he says, myself, muqimun ala nuski hayati bila nafri. All my life, I will remain in the mindset of hajj. Woman rama nafran ba'da nuskin. Fa'innani, muqimun ala nuski hayati bila nafri. This is what hajj is. It's the journey of the love of Allah Ta'ala. Allah give us tawfiq. Allah's Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam remained in Mina and pelted all three days. Quran gives permission for two days or the third, obviously with the preferability of staying the extra day, meaning the third. Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam pelted for those days. And then after the, the Dhuhr Salah, pelting on that day, he then departs to an area called Al Muhassab or Al Hasba. Abdul Aziz bin Rufay rahimahullah says, I asked Hazrat Anas radiallahu anhu, tell me what you remember from Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam on this third day of pelting. Where did he perform Dhuhr Salah? Hazrat Anas radiallahu anhu said at Mina. And I asked him, where did he perform Asr Salah? He said, sallallahu alayhi wasallam on this day performed Asr Salah at Abtah or Bata, meaning Al Muhassab. So Asr, Maghrib, Isha Salahs were performed there. Now there's a discussion in regards to this practice of going to Muhassab after the Hajj. Is it a Sunnah practice? This is a difference of opinion. There's an amazing report from Hazrat Usama radiallahu wherein he said, I asked Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Nabi of Allah, tomorrow where will we be heading to? Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, tomorrow we are going to Khayf Bani Kinana. This is Al-Abtah. And this is the place of Usama, Haythu Taqasamu ala al-Kufr where the forces of Batil, where the unbelievers gathered to discuss their sinister plans of falsehood and disbelief. So we learn from here that Allah's Nabi Sallallahu departure to that area and his camping at that place specifically was with a great objective. Meaning where they were making the worry and the concern of Batil, we will go there and make the remembrance of Allah and please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And really, this is a very important lesson for us. Wherever forces of Batil are taking place, efforts of Batil are taking place, we should go there with the correct fikr, with the correct worry, with the ibadat of Allah ta'ala, with the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we learn this strategy and this practice from the sunnah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa that Allah's remembrance on a certain land, Allah's deen taking place, the effort of deen taking place in certain places, it alleviates pandemics, it removes calamities, it brings and draws the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what emphasizes this practice further is the understanding of Sahaba radiallahu anhum. Because the Khulafa Rashidun, after their Hajj, they would also spend this time on this day at that same area wherein they saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spend that time and rest. Allama Nawawi rahimahullah mentions that the practice of the majority is that it is highly encouraged to follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in regards to this practice as well and also follow the Khulafa Rashidin. And yes, there isn't sin for the one who doesn't go to Batha and spend those hours there and perform those salawat there. But may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to love the sunnah and may Allah enable us to aspire to practice and bring alive the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and all his sunan in our lives. May Allah bless the Ottoman Khilafah wherein they even built masajid in important areas like these like in this area exactly where Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spent these hours they constructed a masjid there that stands up till today Alhamdulillah wherein it's available for people to go there and practice this beautiful sunnah then Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam departed to the Kaaba Sharif performed tawaful wada' there is a difference of opinion as to whether he entered the Kaaba on this occasion or not but yes he did enter on the occasion of Fath Makkah the conquest of Makkah, which was the eighth year. But did he enter, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Kaaba Sharif on the occasion of Hajjatul Wada'a? It is not confirmed. After that night, Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa performed the Fajr Salah in the Haram, reciting Surah Al Tur. Hazrat Umm Salama says she heard the recital of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of Abu Tur while she was performing her Tawaf. Interestingly, Hazrat Umm Salama al makhzumiya radiallahu anha, our mother Umm al muminin was the last of the Ummahat al muminin to, to live and remain in this worldly life. She was the last of those to leave this world of the Ummahat al muminin 
Allah's Nabi وسلم, then departed from Makkah Mukarramah from the path road, from the road called Quda. And he took Zamzam water with him. Interesting is his departure from this route. Nabi Sallallahu entry was from one route and he departed from this route. It seems that Allah's Nabi Sallallahu beautiful practice of walking on different paths with the dhikr of Allah, with the worship of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala was practiced on this occasion as well. And also it also would be that Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left Makkah Mukarramah on his on his hijrah from this on the same route but in concealment but now in the shukr of Allah Ta'ala openly he departed on the same route. And interestingly he also, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, entered Makkah Mukarramah from this root Quda when he conquered Makkah Mukarramah as well, when he entered that grand entry of humility and victory. So we learn these beautiful practices of Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam, taking Allah's name on every route in all areas. As believers, we should aspire to bring alive this beautiful practice and this beautiful sunnah of remembering Allah everywhere, taking Allah's name everywhere so that more lands can bear testimony to our worship of Allah Ta'ala and our remembrance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. May Allah give us tawfiq. Shukar, as we mentioned, Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam took Zamzam water with him as well. What Mubarak water, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala answers the du'as of one who prays on drinking that blessed water. Then our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam departed and he journeyed to Medina Munawwara. And as he was on his route, he traveled a great distance on that route. And all the Sahaba عنهم, who came from different different areas and regions and countries and vicinities had now all returned. And then Allah's Nabi وسلم, was left with those Sahaba who came from Medina Munawwara. So he reaches an area called Ghadir Khum, which is near an area near to Medina Munawwara called Juhfa. So in this area, Allah's Nabi وسلم, explained to the Ummah the great virtues of Hazrat Ali radiallahu anhu. Certainly there are some forces who try and misunderstand and misconstrue this incident. Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa didn't explain the virtues of Hazrat Ali radiallahu anhu in Makkah Mukarramah or during the Hajj and so forth. This was after he departed from Hajj. Everyone had gone home. He's nearing Medina Munawwara. He gathered Sahaba radiallahu anhu who are now returning with him to Medina Munawwara. And Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wanted those Sahaba who were with Hazrat Ali Radiallahu Anhu on his journey prior to this in Yemen because there were some misunderstandings where some uh, accused Hazrat Ali Radiallahu Anhu. So Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wanted to clarify the innocence of Hazrat Ali Radiallahu Anhu. That's why he explained the virtues of Hazrat Ali radiallahu anhu on this occasion. And yes, he is one of the greatest Sahaba radiallahu anhum. To be precise, the fourth greatest of all the Sahaba radiallahu anhum is our Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And as people of Iman, we love and respect and revere and follow and emulate all the Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq and give us the understanding of the beautiful life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. And certainly, according to Quran, it is a sign of kufr to feel any hatred in the heart on hearing about any Sahabi radiallahu anhu because Allah says in Surah Al-Fatih, لِيَغِيضَ بِهِمُ الْكُفَّارِ the disbeliever is one who would be enraged by hearing about the Sahaba radiallahu anhu. Because the person of Iman, a mu'min, would, 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 his Iman would become enhanced and strengthened on hearing about the lifestyle and the beautiful life of the Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Then Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam continued his journey to Medina Munawwara. And then came the last few months, some of the saddest months for the Ummah in the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa because shortly he sallallahu alayhi wa would be departing from this transitory world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. Barakallahu feekum. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyil ummi bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.